All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now, for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm can i gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero, so I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So for x minus one equals zero, all I have to do is add one on both sides and I get x is equal to one. And for x squared plus x plus one equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative one plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of three plus one is equal to zero. And I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to negative one meaning x is also equal to negative one. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of six plus one equals zero, I'm gonna again subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of six is equal to negative one. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to six root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one over six. So now, the sixth root of negative one is, say the, we know that I is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So negative one to the power of one over six is the same thing as negative one to the power of one half minus something. So now one over six, or I should say one half minus one over six is equal to one over three. So one over six plus one over three is equal to one half. We know this, meaning we have negative one to the power of one over six And this plus, or sorry, I should, one over two minus one over three is what we can rewrite one over six as. Now, this is the same thing as one half plus negative one over three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, 
this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the problem 9 over 4 to the power of 9 over 4. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite this as 3 squared over 2 squared to the power of 9 over 4. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So 3 squared over 2 squared is going to equal 3 over 2 squared, and I still have this to the power of 9 over 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, so it's going to equal 3 over 2 to the power of 2 times 9 over 4, which is equal to 3 over 2 to the power of 18 over 4, which is equal to 9 over 2. So I have 3 over 2 to the power of 9 over 2. Now, 9 over 2 is the same thing as 4 plus 5 over 2. And this is equal to 4 over 2 plus 5 over 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal 3 over 2 to the power of 4 over 2 times 3 over 2 to the power of 5 over 2. Now 4 over 2 is equal to 2. So I get 3 over 2 to the power of 2 times 3 over 2 to the power of 5 over 2. And 3 over 2 squared is equal to 9 over 4. So I get 9 over 4 times 3 over 2 to the power of 5 over 2, which is the same thing as the square root of 3 over 2 to the power of 5. And now this is equal to 9 over 4 times the square root of 3 to the power of 5 over the square root of 2 to the power of 5. Now the square root of 3 to the power of 5 is equal to 9 root 3. And you can get this by simply multiplying the square root of 3 5 times. Now, and the square root of 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 4 root 2. So I have 9 over 4 times 9 root 3 over 4 root 2, which is equal to 81 root 3 over 16 root 2. And we don't want any radicals in our denominator, so I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. So I get 81 root 6 over 16 times 2, which is 32. So this is my answer.